Alright guys, welcome to Denver Zoo's Flamingo Walk. My name is Brittany. These are three of our juvenile American flamingos. Now the Denver Zoo has two different species of flamingos. Chilean flamingo, or I'm sorry, American flamingos like you see here. And then we also have Chilean flamingos, which are from South America. You can see both the species together in our pond exhibit right around the corner here when we're done. So I mentioned these guys are American flamingos. And they call them that because they're found in the Americas. So you can see uh, large breeding flocks in Mexico, um, Bahamas, Cuba, and even Florida and Texas. You can sometimes see these birds um, here in the United States. Guys, join us here. We're just getting started. And these guys are about two years old. They hatched last July here at the Denver Zoo, but they've got a unique story about them. Their flamingo parents don't live here in Denver. They live in Miami. They're a wild flock of flamingos that lay their eggs in a, a, a racetrack every year. <laughs> kind of like grassy knoll area. So for one reason or another, every year these birds get scared off and they abandon their eggs, whether it's predators or city life or whatever's going around, they abandon their eggs. So the zoo, Miami Metro Zoo, goes and collects these eggs and then distributes them to zoos across North America. So we got in 19 eggs last two, two years ago, and the zookeepers provided um, food and water and warmth and shelter for these birds, just like their parents would. Um, so we, we call that process hand rearing. So these birds were hand reared right out of the egg, and so that's why they're so comfortable around people. That's why we can do a demonstration like this and not have them so scared. But American flamingos are the biggest of the flamingo species. There are six species worldwide, and they all kind of come from different regions of the world. And they're the largest and the most pink. When you go, when you go look at the Chilean flamingos in, the, in our exhibit, you'll see they're much paler pink. They're even smaller, more petite birds too. So these guys are, are the most pink and, and the biggest of all the birds. So does anyone know why flamingos are pink? Any guesses? Has anyone heard why before? Yeah. They eat the shrimp. That's right. So shrimp and krill and other species of invertebrates, even some species of algae, will turn their feathers this pink color. And they need to eat that certain food to stay so pink or else they'll be totally white. So when these flamingos hatch out of their eggs, they're white little fluff balls. And the more they grow, and the more they learn to eat on their own, and the more their parents feed them, the more pink they turn. So that's kind of a unique thing about flamingos. Um, their color of their feathers is solely determined by the food that they eat. Now a lot of times people ask me um, if they ate green food, would they turn green? And it doesn't quite work like that. Um, it's a pigment, an actual <laughs> pigment, not a dye, that's in this krill and the shrimp. And um, when they uptake the, uh, when they eat the shrimp, they're uptaking the nutrients and they're utilizing that pigment and it's expressed outwards in their feathers. So. It only works with pink, so they have two options, pink or white. <laughs> so flamingos are what we call filter feeders, and all three of these birds are demonstrating it perfectly. What they do is they use that downward curved bill upside down in the water to filter out small particles of food from the, from the liquid. So you guys have all heard of like a bathing yeah, whale? Hysterical. They're doing the exact same thing as the whale, just on a much smaller scale. So they have a structure that lines their beak, and if you look closely, you can see it. It's called lamellae. It looks like maybe the teeth of a, a hair comb or maybe like a zipper, and they use that to trap in the particles of food when they're uh, filtering water in and out of their mouths. They're using that structure to filter, uh, uh, to hold the contents of the food inside their mouth. So pretty cool. Another adaption that flamingos have to filter feeding is their tongue. They have a very unique shaped tongue that kind of fires back and forth in their mouth like a piston of an engine maybe. And what it does is it allows this bird to swallow food and liquid upside down and get all the contents down this large neck. So a lot of times when you see a bird take a drink of water, it's going to have to lift its head to swallow. These birds can do all of that upside down, which just makes for more efficient feeding. You don't have to lift your head up every time you want to take a drink. 